hey this is an instruction to binary for binary numbering system and then we'll look at some units and the following videos are going to be about how data is represented in a computer in binary so different types of data we first need to go through a bit of theory to do with numeral systems or numbering systems so in everyday life we use decimal also known as deanery in this topic so exactly the same thing decimal deanery what we use normally so technically speaking it's a base 10 uh, numbering system and that means we have 10 digits we use 0 through to 9 so 10 in total and the base comes from when you have an exponent, the number at the bottom is the base, and then whatever it's raised to is the exponent. And if we go back to place value, so we're talking primary school maths here, which we don't really think about because it's too basic, but it is important for this topic. The column names go up by a factor of 10 each time. So really this is saying 10 to the 0, i.e. 1, anything to the power of 0 is 1. And then 10 for 1 obviously is 10 and increases. So the exponent goes up 1 each time, but the base remains the same. So what we're really saying is we've got 9,000s here, 400s, 10 fives, and 6 ones. And add together, you get a number. So this is important when we talk about binary, because binary is a base 2 system, meaning it's got only two digits, 0 and 1. So all data used or stored in the computer is represented by binary digits shortened to bits. So a bit is either 0 or 1. And all inputs to the computer have to be converted to binary to be used, to be executed, or to be processed. That's why the following videos are all about representing data, different types of data in binary. So we are going to look at representing numbers, of course, but because binary doesn't only represent numbers, it represents all types of data, images, videos, and so on, it's better to think of 1 and 0 as symbols representing true or false. And this allows us to do something called Boolean algebra, which we, or logic, as we've talked about. And this is replicated in a computer with two different voltage levels so it can be on and off on being for one and off being for zero but in reality it's probably more like two different voltage levels so 10 volts and 5 volts and that's why we use binary with computers basically because it's so simple to do we could use base 10 we could use decimal but we'd need 10, 10 different voltage levels and there are certain logic we can do in binary which we can't do in decimal one of the reasons why it's better to think of bits as symbols is because depending on the context one bit pattern, i.e. a string of bits, could represent a number, a character, da, 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 different types of data basically. So this bit pattern, just a long stream of bits, zero and ones, this could be anything. We've no idea what this could be. It could be a number, it could be an instruction, depending on the context. It's better to think of it not as numeric values, but as things that represent other data. So just to look at some units for binary, so a way to express an amount of binary numbers. So a bit is a fundamental unit, you can't get any smaller than a bit, it's either 0 or 1. A nibble is 4 bits, so you've got to be careful. In um, If you're thinking of it in terms of a number, you can get rid of the leading 0, but don't do that because again we're thinking of it in terms of symbols, so 0 does mean something. So 4 bits together. Then you have a byte, which is labelled with a capital B, but it's not really a symbol for nibble. And this is 8 bits, usually we're using bytes, not really using nibbles, but often we we, so we have a group of 8 bits here, but often we'll leave a space in between each nibble for reasons we'll come on to do to do with hexadecimal. Now it becomes more confusing than it should be, really. We have a kilobyte, which is a lowercase k and then a capital B, and this is a thousand bytes. Then you have a megabyte, which is a capital M and a capital B, and is a thousand kilobytes, so each go up by a thousand each time. But the issue is, unfortunately, there are two kind of ways of dealing with um, these larger sizes. So whoever um, came up with these, so, so kilo and mega come from physics, right? But physics deals with decimal, not binary. So physics is in terms of tens, whereas binary is in terms of twos, which makes things difficult. So actually, we're now, we now should be using sizes called using binary prefixes. So like a kibby byte, as KIB is 1024 bytes. And this is correct, you, you never really get a thousand bytes. Due to the way binary works, you're always going to have the closest number you're going to have is 1024. But unfortunately, whoever adapted this, whatever computer science did this, caused loads of trouble down the line by adopting the physics instead of defining it as it should be, which is 1024. And likewise, there's an equivalent one for, for megabyte, i.e., a megabyte, MIB, which is 1024 kibibytes. So a similar theme goes along, you have a gigabyte which is a thousand megabytes, you have a, giga, a gigabyte which is a thousand twenty four megabytes, you have a terabyte, a thousand gigabytes, a tebibyte, a thousand twenty four gigabytes, and then you have a petabyte which is a thousand terabytes, 
and a pebby byte, which is 1024 tebby bytes. So the binary prefix is definitely sound and prophetic, but these are actually the correct ones basically. So if you see megabyte, you should assume it's a thousand kilobytes and not 1024 kibby bytes, although people often get this wrong. So all they do is grow by a thousand each time. Make sure you remember the order, so it's the same order, K, M, G, T, B. It's the same order, it's just the names and the symbols vary a little bit. 